so it's crazy. My dad was is the t- was the team uh, orthopedic surgeon for Mississippi State. That I mean, that makes it even crazier. So yeah, um, it's pretty wild. Yeah. So like. I was around so much, like even throughout the week, I would go in with my dad and see all the football players who were injured or hurt or had an issue. And, and Dak was even one of them. I think, you know, my dad operated on Dak's foot. So um, did, a, did a surgery when he was in college. And so from as long as I can remember, um, I was in the facilities with the Mississippi State football players with those quarterbacks. And man, those are my idols. Those are my heroes. So just wanted to be just like them, and, and really, I wanted growing up. I wanted to play for Mississippi State, but you know, like I said, as the recruiting process kind of um, played out, it just didn't work out that way. And uh, you know, kind of God led me to to the Rebels, so it's just wild. It's crazy. Now you're at Illinois, which is a whole nice. different area of the country. Yeah. But was there a moment with Dak or one of the other quarterbacks that they were able to impart something on you, or get a moment with them that really has impacted you to this day? You know, I think just little interactions. I mean, like, you know, with Dak specifically, I mean, he's the he's the storied guy at that program. He's the he's the legend. He's the guy making the most bucks in the NFL. So you remember um, kind of, you know, his interactions more. So, you know, I think just, you know, what I took from, you know, the kind of the person and player he was is he never gave anybody less. It wouldn't matter if, you know, it was the starting center he inter- interacted with or, if it was little old me, you know, running around the facility or, or a custodian, I mean, he treated everybody with the utmost respect and um, and was always had a smile on his face and, and was the most humble person in that building, from my perspective, at least. And from what I heard from, you know, from my dad and, you know, everybody else in that program. So, you know, I carry with you know, I carry that with me, um, you know, even today is, you know, throughout all the success he had being the number one team in the country, being in that Heisman race and. Uh, being on a lot of draft boards, he was always the most humble dude. Um, you know, stuck you know stuck true to himself and to his roots, and, um, and and played with great leadership, great competitiveness, and and uh, I take a lot from him. So certainly, you are listening to the Zen Game QB Show, where we go inside the minds of college quarterbacks. Our guest today is Illinois quarterback Luke Altmeyer, who has been a part of taking this team to new heights this year in the Big Ten. In this episode, you just heard him talking about being born in Starkville, Mississippi, and how Dak Prescott was a major influence on his career. We continue to discuss more about his journey at Ole Miss and how he wound up transferring to Illinois and what makes the Fighting Illini program so special. So if you want to hear more interviews like this with elite college quarterbacks make sure to subscribe to our podcast on apple podcasts and spotify along with our youtube channel we pick up in the interview with luke talking about how nfl wide receiver aj brown played an integral role in him choosing ole miss over hometown mississippi state it's crazy because aj brown uh, the the guy who plays for the Eagles now, the yeah. receiver is lighting it up, and it's crazy. He went to my high school from Starkville, Mississippi, oh. and everybody was like, "Oh yeah, he's going to state, Mississippi State," and was highly recruited from, from 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 everywhere, and everybody expected him to go to Mississippi State, and he ends up going to Ole Miss, and he took so much hate from, or just you know he had he had a lot of backlash from you know the the Starkville natives and the Mississippi State fans, so. He kind of took the the brunt of that for me, and uh, and so I just followed in his footsteps. And that makes um, sense. Yeah, and so I I basically did the same thing as him. You know, a lot of people wanted me to go to Mississippi State and so on, but um, there was a lot of factors why I chose Ole Miss. Um, you know, the offense, the the fit, the be a, the the ability to to kind of uh, go in and uh, you know contribute for a very successful team. Uh, there was so much, and you know, close to home, so many different things. So. Um, yeah, so shout out to AJ for kind of taking taking the backlash for me, and and everybody just kind of was like, all right, so worked out for him too. So I mean, yeah. it was, was kind of easy to follow. Given that he went in your high school program, when you were in that process, you get to talk to him. So I have to imagine, given his success, that probably had a little bit of an impact on you if you did. Yeah, a little bit. It was just you know kind of easy. I mean, um, I, I certainly would have been more hesitant to make the move to Ole Miss if I didn't kind of see him do it and to see like okay yeah it's it's all right at the end of the day like he went on to be very successful I mean ultra successful one of the best players in Ole Miss history I'm going to be a hall of famer probably in the league so um to see him do it I had no hesitations of you know making that move and um I don't know I thought it'd be pretty cool honestly at the end of the day to be able to grow up and be a Mississippi State fan and to show I can 
you know, kind of go to the, I guess the dark side or whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, it's, it's a cool story, I guess. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. An unrelated note before we get back to Ole Miss, so I don't forget, your father being a surgeon, has it helped you at all learn ways to avoid injuries, um, be smarter with your body? Because I feel like you just get so much consciousness growing up around guys, getting surgeries, needing medical help. <laughs> it has to make you a little bit more mindful of it than your average athlete. Yeah, he would, like I said, I would always be in the building with him when he would go see athletes who would, you know, hurt themselves from the smallest things to the, the largest things like where, where bones are popping out of their bodies and things like that. So I've seen it, I've seen, you know, all the different injuries from A to Z, just, you know, from as long as I can remember. So, um, and he was always, I've always been an athlete and so are my brothers. and. He was always so cautious because he's seen all types of injuries and things. Like he wouldn't have let us have a trampoline because he was scared. <laughs> uh, he was scared we would. That's kind of funny. Yeah, he was scared we would um, jump off, hurt ourselves, something like that. But then, you, then you find a trampoline. That's how kids work. Like yeah. you didn't let you have a trampoline. That, that makes the trampoline the most exciting oh, yeah, thing you yeah, can yeah, find. Sure. We go to our buddy's house. There and you go. That's a, that's jump a, for hours and being being restrictive as a parent. I, I have experienced this as, as yeah. throughout my life. It's the worst thing you can do. Like yeah. I remember I had these friends when I was growing up in Chicago, and we like their their mom was like the most ruthless about candy. Like yeah. no, we can't eat any sweets. And then all these kids would do. They come to my house and they they like raid my pantry that's it yeah that's all you do yeah. so all you're gonna do is jump in the trampoline now way more it's the coolest thing you could possibly have because he's trying to restrict the trampoline that's it. like he wouldn't let us have like scooters or anything like that because he was scared we would good call roll uh, our ankle or I've something like that those. so Probably smart so and he's still that way like I'll, I'll hop on like a little skateboard type thing and he is he freaks out <laughs> he freaks out he doesn't want me to get injured because he's seen it from a to z and i mean that makes me more aware too of just you know kind of being uh aware of everything that i'm good doing. sliding yeah, yeah, for sure. So he he make yeah he makes sure that I'm doing all the right things out there. So it's crazy. It's a good thing for uh, Illinois fans too because I think that people undervalue that the slides like and how important it is to get that right because especially this year and they're trying to be more mindful right now. You can miss a lot of penalties because if you're not sliding early and then a guy comes in and hits you, ref's going to go say, "Hey, you didn't start your process early enough," and this guy had to come in. But that can be 15 yards of a difference, even if uh, even if it does. If you're taking the hit, at least you're going to get compensated for it. Yeah, it's definitely like an art to it. You know, sliding is um, certainly you got to master it, kind of the timing of it, the way to do it. And sometimes sliding isn't the answer because you're, you know, you're leading with your feet and, you know, understanding the time and people are coming right for your head. So it's sometimes not even the safest thing. So a lot of times what I'll do is I kind of dive out of danger. Uh, I was, I was taught that by, I forget by who it was, but somebody, a couple of years ago, just, you know, kind of just falling down and making sure you're kind of not just giving yourself up for people just kind of full speed diving right into your face. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, you might get 15 yards for it. But um, yeah, so you got to kind of got to feel your way kind of of what you should do, whether it's, you know, kind of just falling down or diving or sliding. So it's a matter of winning the battle or winning the war sometimes, too. I see a lot of times where like quarterback does get that 15 yard penalty, but then they just got lit up in the some other dimension and yeah. do you, are you coming back for the rest of the drive from that yeah probably not the way you want to or maybe even the rest of the game because it starts compounding into you're not 100 percent yourself and then you take a sack and yeah. all of a sudden you're more and more hurt and, and not not the it's like kind of like the video game the energy bar is not at 100 yeah, percent yeah. you're just not getting you're not getting the results you want to get yeah it was like half the time like when you see people slide it's like they're getting head injuries or something where they're Heads banging against the turf, or like a defender's flying in and just taking their their uh, their their head off. So, like I said, it's an art. You got to understand the timing of it. You know when you should do it, when you should just fall down or dive, or just kind of give yourself up in certain situations. So, it's definitely a tricky situation to kind of navigate. You but, have to do it because you use your legs a lot. Like you're not you're not a quarterback yeah. that just sits in the pocket and throws. You you do yeah. run. Yeah, I mean it just. I mean, it's kind of, you got to learn trial and error. Sometimes you get, you know, the first couple ones, you get smoked completely. And then you kind of learn, kind of, you kind of learn when to, you know, kind of fight your battles with, with certain things. So, and you really got to get adept on the, the offense that you learned at all Miss. And now here, that's a part of, that's a part of being the quarterback there. Yeah. Coach Kiffin, he's, a, he's a big advocate for having a quarterback who can move around, is very mobile and can, and can make plays with their legs. I mean, I was under Matt Corral for, for a year and he had he, he was all over the place i mean he had games where he was, was good yeah I think that year he was he was balling yeah i think against tennessee he had 
over 150 rushing yards maybe, and, and, and it was just a big part of his offense. I mean, their quarterback now is a guy who is very mobile too. So I kind of, you know, fit right into that, I guess, and, and, and learn to, to learn from, you know, Corral and, and, and um, learn, learned how he did things and, and kind of adapted it to my game. Did you ever overlap with Jackson? Yeah. Um, so my sophomore year, he transferred in from uh, USC and we battled, you know, the whole entire uh, – the whole entire, uh, you know, kind of that year, uh, you know, kind of spring, summer, fall, we ended up splitting starts the first two seasons, and he uh, he got the rest from uh, throughout that year, which forced me out and forced me here, to be honest with you. And then you had Plumley was there too for a bit of your tenure, also. Yeah, another guy who's freaking athletic as as, as they come, and um, Oof, my fast. Yeah, he's I mean one of my best buddies too, so that's kind of cool. But. So, yeah, he played quarterback the year before I got there. I get there. He transfers to receiver or he moves positions to receiver for a year, makes a lot of plays for us, and then transfer to, transfers to U, uh, U, uh, UCF and then um, plays quarterback for two years. Now is with the Jags uh, practice squad, so doing good. And you got to experience one of the highest level quarterbacks in college with Corral, which was pretty cool. I mean, he was, he was as good as anybody in the NCAA that year before he went. Well, I thought he was going to go in the first round. When he was when he was playing with you, yeah, he's he's you know, you know one of you know one of the guys that I looked up to, I still look up to, uh, you know most, you know just being a college quarterback, seeing him uh, compete, play, lead, you know the teammate that he was was something that I'll carry with me throughout my playing days. Uh, you know most definitely uh, the competitive competitiveness that he brought to the table. Um, you know every single day, uh, the mentality was was different it really was and um you know watching him play you know i carry a lot uh you know to to, to my I can game see it actually yeah when you, when you really do watch it out there there are a lot of similarities between what you're doing and what matt did yeah his think, best at all miss right now i tell you i take so much of his toughness and his competitiveness that he played with and and kind of an edge that he brought to the to the table every game is uh you know was so freaking you know unique and uh, I loved watching him on on Saturdays when I was a sideline, and just really hoped I could, you know, play even somewhere near close, to, you know, to to, to 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 the level that he was playing at, and um, and I hope I make him proud, I guess, because I'm, you know, in ways trying to emulate just the competitive competitiveness and toughness that he carried with himself. So did it inspire you a little bit this year? He's at a long and winding road, but he made his way to play for the Birmingham Stallions in the UFL this year. And he really, for the first time since Ole Miss, really showed those tools again that made him a great quarterback and was able to get himself into an NFL camp based off of what he what he had done. But I have to imagine, as a person that looks up to him, that must have been pretty inspirational for you before your breakout season this year to see him dealing again. He looked great. Yeah, it was so cool. I, I made sure to to tune into like every game, every it was snap. Awesome. Yeah, it was so it was so awesome to see just to see him operate, to see his growth of. You know how he's changed as a quarterback, and you know what I can take from his game because I kind of I kind of understand kind of what he's thinking at times, and uh, you know kind of just understand you know what he's doing a little bit. So made sure to watch every single game, just rooted for him, uh, you know prayed for him, uh, and, and he got like like you said, he got picked up by the Vikings for a little bit, and I mean just that alone is just so freaking cool. So we move from talking about the influence of Matt Corral on Luke's career to him navigating the very difficult waters of the transfer portal when he decided that it was his time to seek a new destination. The, the, the waters are um, the waters are dangerous in the portal, uh, especially with the time window that you have. It's so short, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, teams hitting you up like it's like you're in high school again and having such a short amount of time to to really uh, to make a to make a move and really not being able to visit a whole lot of places is ultimately just getting down to business and you know finding you know what's right for you and I feel like Illinois was that best option for me. How did you know? Yeah, I mean a lot goes into it, a lot of factors, a lot of things vary, but I think the you know, the number one thing is what what what's in, like what's important now is I wanted to play like and I wanted like wherever that I wanted to play at a high level too. I wanted to to play in a great conference and play against great teams and to be able to put myself on the biggest stages to, to be successful. And, you know, I, had, I certainly had options to stay close to home and play for um, like some, some smaller schools, some really, really good schools, but I wanted to play, I knew I could play at a very, very high level and um, play at a, at, in, a, in, a, in a power four conference, so to be to be quite frank with you. And Illinois was a, a spot that I really felt like I could affect um, affect the game in, in a positive in a positive light. 
uh, they were coming off a season where they were, they were an eight-win season, could have been nine, could have been even more. So I loved what Coach Bielema had going on, loved the trajectory that their program was was heading, and uh, I wanted to be a part of it. And I think throughout the whole process, I, you know, I just prayed that I would be surrounded by great people and planted in, in a place where I would be um, you know, surrounded by, you know, people who loved me, people who valued me, people who believed in me. And I knew it wouldn't be easy. I knew change was going to be tough. But, um, man, I wouldn't trade uh, any of the failures, any of the stresses, any of the tears, any of the any of the highs, the lows for, 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 for anything. I really wouldn't. Luke talks about his first interactions with Coach Billima and how he instantly knew Illinois would be the right destination for him. Yeah, I think a big thing going into it was, man, I really wanted to be believed in and I want to be valued. Um, and I remember sitting down with him um, in his office, you know, on my visit here to Illinois in the portal. And, you know, one of the first thing he told me was, you know, when you come here, you're going to be an individual a player who's going to be believed in and valued as crazy. And, um, and, you know, kind of at that moment, it felt like this was a really, really – Great opportunity for me, uh, obviously with the coach, the leader, the the communicator, the, the everything that you want to say about Coach Bielema is, um, you know, is absolutely true. He is successful. He's a winner. He's a, not just a winner on the field, but he's a winner of life. And uh, and I love playing for him. Everybody in the program loves playing for him. I know his his staff loves working for him. And uh, and uh, you know he helps all of us be successful in our day to day life and you know in in the wins and loss column too. How has it been living in the Midwest? Like this is just this is just drastically. I've been, I've been flying around the country this this, this season. Like yeah. it's drastically different up it's, here than it is in Mississippi. Is 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 very different. I was just talking to somebody. Like they were asking, like, what's the biggest difference? And it's hard to pinpoint. But you know, I think number one is the weather. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's rough. <laughs> as soon as October hits, hits the the wind starts to to pick up, and, and the wind, windy city of Chicago certainly kind of trickles down here to Champaign. So. Um, and it gets really, really cold, really, really fast, and um, brutal. It is, but you need to get some big coats. Yeah, some coats, some gloves. No, I got a lot of a lot of Carhartt jackets back at the back of the house. But um, yeah, but overall, man, it's 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 pretty it's pretty similar to Mississippi. A whole lot of farmland, a whole lot of just good people. So um, you know, the towns are a little bit different. The more urban kind of living here, a lot of more you know the international population is you know. Uh, a big part of Champaign, um, so in, in the university, so um, you know, a little bit different. You know, Mississippi's more of a small town feel, and kind of, you know, Illinois college town is more, um, a lot more population. But uh, the weather is certainly a, a huge factor. There was a turning point for you here, because at first it wasn't all easy. Like you get in, you get some opportunities, but it wasn't, it wasn't all just like an instant. All right, I'm going to get to this new spot, and I, I got it all figured out. But they did give you opportunity right away. This year you're a new player and you know, you're one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country. You almost never turn the ball over. I said it from my first episode with another quarterback up at Northwestern and Ryan Helensky, also in the state, that I think the stat that speaks probably more than any other stat, in my opinion, to a quarterback's success level is their TD to interception ratio. It's something you've done very well this year is taking care of the ball. What was that like light bulb moment where because I feel like it was a long road for you. And all of a sudden, this, this has been the season where the player I think that you've wanted to be for a long time has started to emerge itself. And it's pretty, it's pretty, like, it's pretty exciting. Like, it's like, a, it's like, you know, totally new guy than the dude who was out there a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's really cool to see it unfold, man. Um, but I think number one is just experience overall, being able to, kind of um, go throughout college, get to play a little bit, and kind of having this season. I mean, I prepared so well, I think, this year throughout spring, the winter, and stuff like that. But, you know, I think the the one key that um, really just changed everything for me was just the mindset. Like, at the end of the day, my talents are my talents. The, the, the Lord has gifted me and given me abilities with um, – you know, all the talents that he's given me, the ability to throw the ball, none of that's going to change. And obviously I can get better at those things, but understanding that and understanding uh, he's given me these talents to, to really glorify him, to thank him in, in the way I play, the way I walk, the way I talk, is has just really freed me and allowed me to understand that football is just something that I do. It's not who I am. And, uh, and I think the moment that I just stopped fixating 
on football and, and, and the success that I could have in it is the moment that God kind of brought me it. And uh, it's been super cool to watch it unfold. And, um, and I know the Lord's testing me too in the successes that I'm having and, and making sure that I'm handling it the right way. So I think humility is a big key in, in this whole season for me too. But man, I, I mean, there's so many things I can get better at too. Um, you know, daily I watch the film and the things that, those things that stick out to me are, are the failures. So. I think number one, just failures and scars and, and losses and shortcomings has really molded me into who I am today, to be honest. And you've gotten to go through the whole cycle ups and downs. It does, as a human being, make us tougher. Um, I think that we're given those challenges so we can learn how to overcome them, learn how to get better. The first thing I thought of when you said that uh, the winter, I'm like, well, I guess it's so cold here that film study's got to be a little easier when it's just like <laughs> freezing and there's nothing to go out and do. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, you, there's so many beautiful golf courses up here. It's one thing that I was shocked, but you know, as soon as it gets cold, you. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous in the summer. Yeah, the summers here are excellent. Yeah, you're not, you're not going. To, once October hits, <laughs> stuff like that, you're not going, you're not going out to play no more golf and stuff like that. So it, it definitely is easier to go into the facility and sit in, sit in a, a heated, a heated, <laughs> you know, quarterback room to to flip to turn on some film and, and prepare. You said you always look for your flaws. Um, yeah. What were the two or three maybe standout things that when you were sitting freezing your ass off here that you feel like you <laughs> honed in on that really improved your game as you kind of sat back and watched yourself from last season? Yeah, I think number one, it was difficult to watch um, because like I said, there was there was failures in there. There were shortcomings. There were, um, you know, things that I didn't want to trans, you know, that I wanted to, that I didn't want to happen, you know, in that 2023 season. But, you know, I'm so glad they did happen because it's, like I said, it's created uh, created things that, that make me want to get better at and, and it's turned me into the player I am today. But there's so many different things within the quarterback position that you just need experience of and, and, and kind of have that trial and error, um, uh, you know, time that in uh, kind of that first year. There's there's so many things from the ground up, starting with my feet, uh, you know, my base to, to my fundamentals and things like that. And, um, you know, just slowing the game down around me and understanding that it is just football at the end of the day and trusting the people around me, trusting my offensive lines, trusting my coaches, my training and and putting that all together along with that mindset that we talked about was was that light bulb for me. So it's good stuff and really helps you be one of the more efficient passers in the country. I have to imagine this like sitting back and watching maybe what some of those turnovers looked like helped you not make some of the same mistakes again this year. Yeah, certainly. They weren't easy to watch, like I said, but, um, you know, watching those hard moments uh, are, are very essential, very um, much needed uh, to, to get, if you want to grow and to get better at. So, yeah, I think it just goes back to trust. Uh, you know, you make those mistakes, uh, you know, turnovers, interceptions, all that stuff. And understanding a big part of that was just me not trusting myself, trusting my teammates, our preparation, the training, uh, you know, trusting that people are going to be in the right spots for me. And, uh, and I think this year I've really tapped into that to a whole new level because of that mindset of just trusting the gifts that I've been given and trusting uh, the preparation of the whole team and what we have been through to, 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 you know, kind of get to where we are now. Kind of to wrap, you talked about it a little bit, but I'll, I'll just kind of zone in on it for a moment of the interview. Faith obviously plays a big role in your life. You've mentioned it at almost every turn. I think for a lot of guys who have succeeded at your level without it, it would have been a lot more challenging. What was the lowest moment you feel like you've had during this run and how did faith help you work through that? Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the man I am where I am today without it, without, you know, you know, I come from a Christian background. My, my two parents have continually continually and ever since I've you know been uh, been alive have pointed me to Jesus Christ becoming more like him and um, and there's been so many moments throughout my college career and even high school career where I you know came up against adversity and just failure and and finding myself on the ground and uh, so many tears shed and um, and ultimately I had to find my way find find ways to pick myself back up and and that was leaning on and standing on the foundation that I've built, um, you know, through Jesus Christ and understanding who he's called me to be, the purpose that I live with daily, um, understanding that I didn't create myself, but he created me, uh, the Lord God, and um, and he has called me to do really, really special things and um, just to be thankful in his presence every single day. And like I said, football is just something that I do. And a lot of my adversities, a lot of my shortcomings have come, you know, come from football and me fixating on that is really 
multiply multiplied that by a thousand and understanding I don't have to idolize football because it's just something that I do and something that he's gifted me to do and um, and knowing that has really opened me up and freed me and whatever comes my way now um, uh, whatever whatever loss whatever scar whatever whatever it is man I, I have a so, such a rock, rock or you know a solid foundation to stand on and knowing that I can go anywhere I want to go because he gives me so much strength. And do you think of a moment where you just felt something greater with you on the football field? Yeah, it's literally it's crazy to say that. I think the Nebraska game that we talked about, Friday, the Friday night game, everything was in play. Their 400 sellout, um, kind of my first real solidified start on the road, a Big Ten conference game where kind of all the hype was on their quarterback, Dylan, who's an incredible player. And we were the underdog. Nobody really expected us to go do it. And that whole week, I mean, there were so many factors to distract me, so many external things like the eyes that would be on the game, the underdog aspect, the, the going on the road, like, you know, how are we going to make this happen? But, you know, throughout the whole week, I had so many people pour into me and help me see Jesus so clearly that, that week. And, um, you know, I prayed throughout the week and th throughout, you know, um, throughout the game that it would just be me and the Lord out there. And his presence with me out there was certainly clear. And he helped me see what I needed to see. He um, helped me realize and become aware of, um, you know, my training is uh, going to take me, um, you know, further than I can even know. So that Nebraska game really, really, um, uh, it was a light bulb moment for me to understand the presence that the Lord was, you know, was certainly with me and uh, will always be with me if, you know, I really just tap into it. It's available whenever you want. Absolutely. And I'm so thankful for it. And uh, it's so much greater than, you know, football to me. So. Before parting, Luke tells us what makes the Illinois Brotherhood so special and why they have a chance no matter who their opponent is. You know, we're not the most talented roster that, that, that we'll face that, that, that on, in the nation, but, you know, I think we're, we're dang near the, the, the tightest brotherhood that you'll come across. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't trade that aspect, you know, for anything in the world. And I know um, the brothers that I have, you know, in that locker room will carry with me until the day I die. And that is so much greater than any win that we'll have. But I know that we'll, we'll keep riding this and, and because of the process that we've fallen in love with. It's been a pleasure being a part of documenting this thing, and yeah. I'm excited to see the rest of it unfold this year. Appreciate you, man. It's been awesome. Pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Luke Altmeyer as much as we did. If you want to hear more interviews with elite college football quarterbacks, make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We look forward to seeing you on our next episode.